Normally, I have this thing. I've had this thing for, well, since I was in my early 20s or late teens. And this thing's worked okay. Um, really old Radio Shack brand. They're not around anymore. Um, so, uh, but what I've done is I've upgraded. So, this. Hacko, Hacko, really nice case, and this is the Hacko FR301 desoldering tool. Pretty substantial piece of equipment, and the price reflects it. It was, you know, something in the neighborhood of two hundred and forty dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so, and it came with a couple of spare filters. You know, you don't necessarily want the solder to make it all the way into the uh, motor pump area. And uh, I have no idea what this is. So, anyway, <laughs> time to read the instructions. Looks like this might be a release button for this. Anyway, I'm going to read the instructions and then we're going to start using that to get these 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 uh, sockets out which are going to be a real pain hopefully this makes it easy so anyway um, you this is pretty easy to get open this this um, area what's it called uh, the filter pipe so if you just pull this back this puppy comes right out and there you can see the ceramic paper filter that's removable and then and then you can just sort of get that apart and discard the solder. And replace this filter if it becomes like rigid. Um, let's see, it says hardened by flux staining. Yeah, so I, I think I'm going to minimize the use of flux um, so I don't have to replace these filters too much, too often. Um, because, yeah, flux is, is basically a liquid that um, will get sucked all the way through the iron, much easier than the solder itself. So we'll see this, how, how this works without, uh, without flux. Okay, so you actually pull this back and it snaps into place. Probably didn't do it quite right. And then this thing will slide in and then you push the button and now everything's locked in. Not bad design. And this part here is what? An iron holder? So this is basically a piece of bent metal. Um, you know. I guess you put the iron on its side and and just set it in there. Doesn't really show. You know. But yeah, let's. Oh, it did. It does come with some cleaning tools. It comes with a a little nozzle clearing tool and a another tool here for cleaning the nozzle. That's cool. Uh, plastic, formed plastic hinge on the box. That's a negative. Would have hoped to have seen something at this price point that actually had real hinges on it. Yeah, but you know, whatever. It's not even. I guess you could knock it and it would hit something by accident, but anyway. Oh, here's the power switch. Jeez. Wow, that is really recessed. Anybody got meaty fingers? You're going to have a hard time pushing that on and off. Because it's flush, 
I, I don't see the reason for that other than like it's out of your way but then again it it isn't really it it's kind of digging into your flesh a little bit there I mean it's not it's all smooth and everything but it's not like it's comfortable so that was kind of a fail design I think I mean why not just put a button I don't know like on the body or on the cord or underneath but here like oh I can do it one-handed nope I can't get my thumb in there I cannot get my thumb in. yeah there we go barely and there are people who have wider fingers than me so let's give this a try so the sections of the very basic manual they give you has one packing list and part names okay yeah two specifications and then three warnings and cautions okay big section there four the part names and five operation so you go right from looking at things you know general information right to operation so there's no setup technically um, it does say uh, preparation right here so there are um, three steps in the preparation insult the plug insert the plug into the power in the power cord Turn the power switch on, wait about one minute, so apparently it heats up in one minute. Um, and then uh, uh, apply a generous coating of solder to the end of the nozzle. So that's kind of counterintuitive because I've been, you know, I was taught that you don't really put solder on the iron necessarily. Um, you put solder on the part. You use the iron to heat the part so the iron is touching the part. Let's say it's a through hole component and you got the pin sticking out. Heat up the pin or heat up the pad, usually the pin. You want to heat it, put the soldering iron against the pin and then approach from the other side with your solder and 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 until and, and, and hold it there until it melts and flows into a nice ball. Um, so, you know. But, you know, I mean as long as you can cuz it, it'll it'll eventually do damage to the tip. I I was when I started soldering, I had a soldering iron. It's actually this one. Well, it's one over there. And the soldering tip, it was misshapen. It was malformed because I was always throwing solder on the, t on the iron first and then throwing it on my part. And that'll, you know, that'll damage the tip eventually if you do it enough. So I think that's the point. Also, I think it's a way that it actually creates more fumes. I don't know. It seems like when I put solder right on the iron, it creates more fumes than when I have the solder on the part. Um, you know, maybe it's just because the part is a little cooler than the iron itself. I don't know. But um, the nozzle um, has a replacement part. That's the beauty of getting a name brand one, you know. Um, definitely a name brand, this one, it basically, just simply off on the price. Uh, the availability of replacement parts for years to come. I. I invest in my tools. I don't just buy them and use them once or whatever. So I plan to use this thing a lot. I do do a lot of desoldering by working on Amigas and other stuff. So anyway, we'll get working. Okay, I smell melted solder. I see some fumes. And the, the nozzle's clear when I did that little sucky thing. <laughs> Oh, the only thing I don't have is uh, something to wipe the nozzle with. Uh, let me go get something. So unlike other desoldering tools, the cheaper ones, this one is all self-contained. It's just this unit itself and its power cord, which is kind of cool because I don't have to expend some space and usually I'm working on so many things and so large of things, especially an Amiga 2000, that I don't really want to, um, I don't really have the space to spare. So that's, that's a nice feature. So um, yeah, here we go. so the I idea would be to have it actually, I had a lot of experience with, with, with my angle. You need to be perpendicular to the surface because if you're off to one side or the other, um, not all the suction power will, will, will go. It'll, some of it will come from the side and um, you want it to come from, with, from around and within the hole. You want to suck all the solder out because the solder goes all the way through the hole and, it, and it's also on the other side of the board. So it would be nice if you could 
suck it all through. So let's keep going here. See if you can see that. Oh, go this way with this hand. There. So they say you're supposed to wiggle it around till you feel it's melted, and then yeah, works pretty good. Why this is so much better than my old bulb soldering iron, and also. Um, you know, using one of those uh, spring-loaded uh, tube things um, is the fact that this kind of has an unlimited supply of suction. As long as you're holding the button down, it's going to keep sucking. So the uh, the bulb and the, the the pen, whatever it is, have uh, they only suck for just a, a little bit of time, and then they're done. And then you got to re redo the whole thing over again. So. Um, and the fact that I don't have to get out a big power supply thing and this and set it up and all this, I could just take this out of its case like a soldering iron. And, and I think that was the idea and the design of this is to make it self-contained. And uh, I think it's a really good, uh, really good thing, really good design. So um, needless to say, this is a high wattage um, uh, unit, so uh, you don't want to hold it. Uh, on a board like this, you don't want to hold it on there too long, just long enough to, to get the job done. So in conclusion, I would give this product 4.5 stars, 9 out of 10. I think pretty soon I'm going to realize that I can't live without this thing. <laughs> uh, there obviously can be some improvements made, but overall it's a great product and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.